Hi, this is Alex, and in this short video, I'd like to share with you a, a short phrase that you can use to build a deeper relationship with the Vietnamese lady that you're courting and maybe eventually marry. And this, uh, short, uh, this short phrase is asking her when's her birthday. But first, how would you like an ongoing supply of free reports, helpful resources, and unique cultural insights for meeting, dating, and marrying a Vietnamese woman? Too easy. Just take a quick moment to subscribe and click the bell icon and you'll never miss out again. So if you don't have any familiarity with Vietnamese, let me share with you a little bit, a couple of the highlights. Uh, one, Vietnamese is a tonal language, meaning that the words have different pitches. This will be a little bit more obvious here uh, as I'm gonna share with you what this phrase is. And then secondly, Vietnamese uh, is written using uh, uh, vowels and con uh, using an alphabet very similar to English except that the sounds, as you can imagine, can be very different, all right? So let me hold up this board here and then I'm gonna read it to you. Again, the phrase that we're they're gonna be practicing here is asking your lady, whose name is Lin, uh, when is her birthday? Now, Lin is phonetically the same in English and in Vietnamese, which is why I picked it. Uh, however, it's written a little bit differently in Vietnamese, but uh, just the reason I picked that name is just to make it easier uh, while you're learning the rest of this, all right? So this phrase right here in English is asking Lin, the lady you're with, when's her birthday? Now, obviously, if her name is different, then you would substitute this, all right? So I'm gonna read this to you so that you can hear it, and then I'm gonna break it down, and I'm also gonna show you how to form these sounds um, for an English speaker, all right? So the, what it, the way it reads is this, it's just gonna say, Ki nào la, Ki nào la, sinh nhật của Linh, Ki nào la, sinh nhật của Linh. So if you listen to that, you know, if you rewind it a little bit, you'll hear that my voice kind of goes up and down a little bit. That's what I mean when I say that Vietnamese is tonal, all right? Now, the one thing I want to emphasize is this, if you haven't seen my other videos, is Vietnamese grammar is very, very, um, uh, how would I put this, simplistic compared to English grammar, meaning that there really isn't a form of, there's a lot of words that you would use in English to form a sentence that in Vietnamese wouldn't doesn't exist. So if I were to translate, translate this literally, it would be very choppy. So try not to, I mean, I'm gonna break, tell you each one of, what each one of these words mean, but don't try to then kind of fill in the gaps, you know, by putting in other words in this. Because as I said, English is in many ways a more complex language, especially when it comes to grammar, all right? So let me kind of break this, okay? Key now, key now is Vietnamese for when, all right? So the, again, it's pronounced key now. Now you may see this little, you know, uh, thing here about the letter uh, O, that brings the word down a little bit. So if I didn't have that, it would be pronounced key now. You see, whereas with this word right here, it says key now. This is the, the, you have to lower the word. I mean, you have to lower the sound for that particular word. Otherwise, the, it, the, the, the meaning is lost, all right? Key now, la. You see, again, you notice that there's a similar thing here over the letter A, right? When, I, when, that, when that little accent exists over a, over a word, it brings the tone down a little bit. Again, if I didn't have that, if I erased that, I would say, he now la. La means to yell, which, you know, diff, different word, right? So it is pronounced, he now la, xin yat. Xin yat is birthday, right, in Vietnamese. Now, uh, it's, you know, it's capitalized because it's just, just the way it is in Vietnamese. Now, you may notice this dot under the letter A, right? That really brings on the sound, okay? So, shin nyat. Nyat is, if you hear it, it's very low, right? Nyat, it's almost like a, you know, the closest analogy I, I can explain is like in music, right? You have different tones. And that's why, again, a lot of, um, a lot of people when they describe Vietnamese, and uh, it, 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 they, they call it a tonal language, right? Or pitch. So, this word right here makes the word go down, nyat. You see? If you didn't have it, it'd be nyat, right? Which is a different word. So again, I'm not trying to explain you all, every nuance of Vietnamese. I'm just trying to uh, show you enough to, you know, so you can say this phrase if you wanted to, to, to your lady, all right? So, Guo, Lin, Lin is, you know, her name. You notice that there's a little, kind of almost like a question mark here above the word Guo. See, if I didn't have this, this here, it would be pronounced a neutral sound, be Guo, which is a crab which, as you can imagine, that's not what we want to say, right? So these, these are the different things that make Vietnamese uh, a little bit more difficult for a non-native speaker, mainly because of the fact that 
you know, the words kind of go up and down, right? Whereas English is fairly neutral, um, for, at least for most speakers. So, so let me repeat this again several times, okay? Key now, again, that means when. Key now, la, shinya, this is birthday, all right? Guo, lin, of lin, all right? So if you were to train this literally, it, it's, it, it sounds very choppy, but let me try to explain what it means. When is the birthday of Lin? All right, because we, in Vietnamese, there's really no concept of possessive as we have in English. And so usually it's, it's translated more like, you know, when is something of somebody else? So this is saying again, Ki nào, when, la, xin nhật, của Lin, Ki. So let's, let's, um, let me break this down, you know, phonetically here. So hopefully you can see how, how my, my, um, my lips and my, um, how I form these sounds, right? Ki, K-H, this word right here, it's, a, it's what we call a soft C. Fortunately, it exists in English. That's how actually English speakers pronounce the, the letters, you know, the C sound. Key, all right, like just like the, you know, the letter, key, uh, the word key, right? K-E-Y, key, now. Again, N-A-O, just go down a little bit. Instead of saying now, like, you know, now, like N-O-W in English, this is now. It's a little bit lower. Key, now, la, right? Instead of la, which is, you know, like in a, uh, song like la la this is la key now la key now la all right key now la shin nya this is probably gonna be a little bit tougher right here because it goes even lower shin in vietnamese the letter s pronounced is more like a sh sound so that's why i'm using the word sh here shin nya all right nya is shin nya is birthday all right and then this next one gua Guo is belonging to somebody, right? Guo Lin, so Ki now. See? Ki now la Shin Nya. Guo. See, this is what I meant earlier. I said the Vietnamese has a hard C and a soft C sound. You'll notice that KH is pronounced Ki, which is a what we call a, a soft C sound. In, in Vietnamese, the letter C has because it's some of its roots in french it has what's called a hard c all right so unfortunately there's no counterpart in english and if you take in french it's a little bit easier to say it okay so let me let me try to um make the sound here it's pronounced gua. you know it's how like my vo my my uh, my lips really make a almost an o shape gua. see it's if you try if you try to pronounce it like an, uh like the saucy is going to be gua. See, whereas this is a little bit more har harder and it's more harsh. Gua, you see? So this is, this is pronounced again with a hard C. Gua versus Gua. You see, because the other one, you're basically softening the sound a little bit. That's why there's a distinction between what's called a hard C sound and a soft C sound. So let me say this again. Ki, now, la, shin, nya, gua, lin, ki, now, la shin nya guo lin all right so let's try this again ki now la so just say that a couple of times ki now la ki now la all right shin nya shin just like your sh shin pretty easy nya is uh it's not quite a y sound like in in, in english it's kind of like a little bit it's a little bit soft than that right it's not yet Yet is it has a different word. It has a different meaning. Nyat, right? Nyat, There really isn't that exact sound in English. It's close to a Y sound, like yellow, but it's not. It's not yet. It's nyat. It's you know. So you you move your tongue a little bit more in the middle. Nyat. All right. So shin nyat. Guo lin. Ki nao la shin nyat. Guo lin. Right. Ki nào là xin nhật của Linh. Ki nào là xin nhật của Linh. All right. So now, as I've emphasized in my other videos, right? This is again a video in an entire series. Vietnamese uh, for a non-native speaker to get that tone right is a little bit tricky. I'm not going to sugarcoat it because I've, I've talked to enough English speakers and they share this with me. However. 
if you make an honest attempt at learning this, you're gonna be still f so much further ahead, right, than if you didn't learn it. And as I said in the, in the you know, my other videos as well, what, what she's looking for is, you know, deep down, is, it, is this a fling or is this something like you're serious about? And one of the best way to demonstrate, not talk, but demonstrate that you're in it, that you're serious about this, is at least make a concerted effort to learn some basic phrases, right? It's, again, unless she's very unreasonable, most women don't expect you to be fluent in Vietnamese. It's not an easy language to speak. Written-wise, it's actually very easy, but to speak it correctly, it's very, very difficult, right? So I say that not to discourage you, but to really emphasize what our goal here is, right? We're basically showing these, we're, our, our, my goal and Vanessa's goal is to help encourage you to have a way to demonstrate to your lady that you're very sincere and on, uh, very sincere, and that you are in this for the long term. And bon, I'd say one of the best way to demonstrate that is to make a concerted effort to at least learn basic, simple Vietnamese phrases. Okay, you notice I didn't get into you know the history, the etymology, you know the uh, all the grammar and all that. That's not the purpose of these videos. These videos are really a way for you to have a, a stronger relationship with the lady you're with. All right. So one last time, and then we'll wrap up the video. Okay. So. He now la shin yak guo lin. He now la shin yak guo lin. All right. So in a, in a future video, what I'm going to share with you probably the next couple of days is, of course, when she replies, then you have to be able to understand what she's saying. We have another video you may want to look at, which counts from one to ten, and then of course, you know, she's probably going to tell you the month and the day. And so then what we need to do is, you know, if you like to at least prepare for that, go watch my other video on how to count one to 10. And then we're going to do another video where we're going to be talking about like, you know, the months of the year. Uh, fortunately, Vietnamese doesn't have January, February. It's, it's more like month one, month two, month three. And so the other video is going to really help, you know, you to understand dates because um, counting in Vietnamese is a little bit easier. To, I mean, at least for the month of the year, it's a little bit easier. All right. So with that being said, uh, uh, if you like this video, please click subscribe. And then on behalf of Vanessa and myself, I, uh, I really enjoy and appreciate uh, this opportunity to share with you a little bit of our culture. All right, so this is Alex signing off. And as I said, if you like this video, please hit subscribe and then we'll talk to you soon.